early spring in my garden is an exciting time as I know it is in most people's gardens. It's those first colors popping out after the winter sleep as well as those first flower buds that you see that make it arguably one of the most exciting times in the growing season. I am in southeastern North Carolina so I am in growing zone 8A. So I recognize that some of the things that I have as annuals or perennials could vary for you depending on what growing zone you're in. What do I have in my garden in early spring? Let's see. Right here next to me, I have my wisteria vine. Wisteria you can often see growing wild in trees if you're driving beside a highway or something like that. It is a climber, it is, as I said, a vine. It likes to grow upward. As long as it has some sort of structure to cling to, it will. The wisteria has those really gorgeous light purple plumes of flowers. So it almost looks like a bunch of grapes that just cascade down. It's just stunning. My wisteria here puts on its best show right around mid-April. So I'm very excited because I see it waking up already. So right here, this beauty that has all the stunning colors, that Dianthus, and it's fabulous. It is perennial, and for it to come back and have that vibrant of color first thing in the year, eee, I love that. This baby right here, this is a blanket flower. This is the orange and yellow and sort of reddish flowers that you see growing wild by the beach everywhere. Well, I started out with one of these plants, now I have about a billion because the seed pods on them are like white fluffy things that love to blow in the wind and just plant themselves everywhere. So this is a gorgeous plant, but I have a lot all the time. So I'm always digging them up and giving them away to people because it's just way more than I can handle. This phlox, P-H-L-O-X, is another beauty because it also is so early in the year and it just starts spreading. And with the gorgeous rocks that I have here, it begins to cascade over top of the rocks. It's great to fill in spaces. It is a trailing perennial. Just absolutely love it. Over here to my side, I have little tufts of white daisies. What will be white daisies? Those are something else that I have to separate continually because they come into these big clumps and I can just very easily dig them up and give them to other people. Another fabulous multiplier are all of these, which are lilies. You might see a trend here in my garden. I have a lot of things that are easy to propagate, divide, give away, or spread around my landscape in other spots. These are probably a combination of both red and orange daylilies. I have a lot of lilies on my property and I just keep moving them around and when they bloom, I get surprised at what colors I have where. Depending on exactly how much sunshine is hitting the area, very early spring, I can see my hostas beginning to shoot up. So right now they look like little tiny nubs coming out of the ground. And then of course they're going to fluff out into these amazing, just like, I wanna say lettuce looking like plants if you're not familiar. They do like shade and they are well loved by deer. So a lot of people who have deer on their properties, near their properties, etc., they have to be very careful because the deer will eat them all. I don't have that problem. My problem right now is that my hostas are tremendous and need to get divided. Now these tiny hosta nubs may look like nothing, which is a mistake I've made before, thinking, oh, they don't look that big. I certainly don't need to divide them up until they're fully out of the ground and all their leaves open up and I realize I can probably make at least four decent sized hosta plants out of each one that I have. The success of azaleas in the area here where I live is quite outstanding. 
standing and we even have an azalea festival to celebrate these beautiful flowers. So my azaleas are just about to pop open. Here is one of those spots where I have multiple kinds of lilies. So right here, you can already see them popping up, are gonna be the stargazer lilies. And oh my gosh, they are probably my favorite lily. Here again are the red daylilies. They multiply like wildfire. So again, that's why I can put them in multiple places. My stargazers got really large last year, so I will be able to definitely um, divide that very soon. I'm thinking I'm going to start by putting a pot or two in the greenhouse until the threat of frost goes away. That's my thought for that right now. And these right here are tiger lilies. They are like a delicate orange flower. Oh man, they're just unusual and I love them. And you can see they're also coming up in separate bunches. So they will be quite easy to just put a shovel in between, separate them out, multiples. My garden really puts on its best show in the summer because I have lots of tropical plants that really don't start thriving until later in the summer. But I do have canna lilies here and you can see that they are creeping up. Now let me tell you that last week we had a really, really warm week and that's when you can start to see the canna lily leaves unfold. And then didn't we get frost over this weekend? Then they turned to brown and we have to start over again. But canna lilies also spread, easy to divide. They really are easy to take care of and they're so gorgeous. But one of the things that I have here that stays colorful all winter long is this golden yucca. And it does also propagate. So you can see little tiny um, separations within the plant that you can divide this up as well. Like I said, it's a theme in my garden, I guess. But the, this golden yucca is just amazing because it gives you that lasting color even on the grayest of winter days. So right beside me, you can see that my hydrangea is coming to life, waking up, I should say. So I'm beginning to get new growth on here, which is also very exciting. This one stays a very nice purpley blue, which I love. I also have more hostas. They're just everywhere, just not showing you, but you can see these sweet little spikes. This yellow euonymus is another shrub that I love to have around because it stays this color and looks just like this all through the winter. This is not necessarily waking up for me right now in the early spring, but it always looks this pretty. The crepe myrtle here is also beginning to wake up and you can see the leaves coming out on this one right here. I do have multiple of these around my property. They are gorgeous flowering trees or bushes that are all over the place in North Carolina and in a lot of places really, but they're stunningly gorgeous here. Not all of mine are yet beginning to wake up like this one is. A lot of the time I do have to cheat and keep the little cards from when I buy plants right in the ground next to them because I can't remember what they are. This is an example of that. Early spring, snow surfer candy tuft. But there it is, perennial. I really should not leave these purple hearts out right here. They're like a purple succulent. They do die back in the winter, but oh my goodness gracious, do I have a hundred million of these because they also multiply and I divide them up. I give them away and I pull, put them in other places in my garden. So, but these guys, wait till you see them in the summer. They're gonna be very large, very colorful, vibrant, and just beautiful. So I have two little cuties right here. This one is the Angelina sedum. This lime green succulent is super, super easy to grow. Uh, it is a great ground cover. I have it in pots, in little containers, multiple places in the yard. Just an awesome, awesome, easy growing succulent. This cutie, 
I might have to zoom in on a little bit so you can see it. So this one right here is called Double Scoop Bubblegum Coneflower. It's an echinacea, it's a kind of echinacea. And so the flowers on it are so super cool. It's a pink, different than regular echinacea. And it just, oh, it's large and just, it's just stunning. So I can't wait to show you that. I already have a flower bud right here, but I'm thinking it's main blooming is going to be, you know, over the summer, but yay. So just a few short days ago, I would have been showing you that my banana trees were, were waking up because they sprout very much like canna lilies do and the new growth just opens up and the leaves unfurl and it's gorgeous. And it makes you really feel like, ooh, summer's on its way. But as I said, we got a frost, so the canna lilies, bloop, the, all those leaves wilted and the same thing happened with the banana trees. So I don't even have those to show you right now, but each day it seems I'm finding new things are opening up or beginning to bloom. So I'd love to keep you posted. And I'd also love to hear what is blooming and perking up in your garden. So send me a message. All right, happy planting.